Hello, as you may already know, I am in Germany and due to recent circumstances, as you can imagine, I've been spending a lot of my time indoors. So very early on, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna use this time to focus on myself, maybe learn some new skills. So um, one thing that I've done, wait, one second. I, I bought a yoga mat and I've been practicing yoga uh, by myself every day, which has been really nice and calming for my corona anxiety. Um, another thing I've been doing, wait one second. <laughs> another thing I've been doing is practicing my German. I <laughs> got a classic uh, book here, German for Dummies, and yeah, gradually making my way through this. So maybe when I uh, eventually leave Germany, I'll be able to have a half decent conversation-ish, kind of, maybe, we'll see. And the third thing that I've been doing and I've been dedicating a lot of my time to is cooking. And I have been cooking up an absolute storm. I don't mean to brag, but I did make a pretty freaking spectacular bread the other day. First time in my life I've ever made bread and you know, it was very bread-like. It tasted like bread. It was bread, so um, I'm very excited about that. But as you guys know, I am super obsessed with Chinese food and I've now been out of China for a decent three months, which is a really long time and the Chinese food cravings are hitting me really, really hard right about now. So of course the natural thought I had was, let's use this time to improve my Chinese cooking skills. I interrupt this program with a very important message. Hello, people of the world. I would like to announce that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. And if the name doesn't give it away, it's basically a place where you can learn some new skills. We are in unprecedented times, a time that we'll see most, if not all of us, spending a whole lot of time at home. The question is, how are you gonna spend that time? About to press next episode on that Netflix series you're binge watching right now? No! Get your ass on Skillshare and learn how to freaking watercolor. Or take a photography class, or learn how to use Photoshop or web development. Whatever tickles your particular fancy, it's there. This is probably week one or week two of self-isolation for a lot of you right now. We're right at the beginning of a potential very large chunk of time at home. We have an amazing opportunity right now to learn all of those things we've always wanted to learn but never had the time to do so. Now we have the time. So turn that frown upside down, put down the remote, and think not what this time can do for you, but what you can do with this time. So do yourself a favor, sign up with Skillshare using my link below, and come out of this period stronger and better than ever before. I now take you back to your regularly scheduled program in which I'm gonna be attempting to cook Chinese food just a friendly reminder that Skillshare also offers cooking classes. Let's use this time to improve my Chinese cooking skills. Turns out, not so easy. Every time I try approaching a Chinese recipe or I find something that I have a craving for that I really want to make, I run into this roadblock every single time and that is ingredients. Welcome to my local grocery store here in Germany. This one is called Edeka and it's actually way better stock than most supermarkets. Um, here at Edeka they actually have an entire Asian food section, this row and this row here. Um, most supermarkets don't have this Asian food section so I'm super thankful that at least I have some of the basic ingredients here. You know, you've got the, the fish sauce, the soy sauce, you've got some hoisin paste, but for the most part it's made up of these, you know, curry paste and pre-made um, dinner solutions like mussum and curry cooking sauce or, or like a Thai lemon curry cube. I am super grateful to have at least some of the basic ingredients here, but I want to be making some of those really authentic Chinese dishes like my friends are making over at Chinese Cooking Demystified, the YouTube channel. They're awesome by the way, definitely go follow them. Like I'm looking at recipes that are calling for Shaoxing rice wine, Sichuan peppercorns, soft tofu, sesame paste, chili bean paste, like the, these are things that I just can't get here. And without those ingredients, how am I ever going to make a kick-ass gongbao jiding or mapu tofu or ru So my question the question is, how am I supposed to satisfy my cravings for decent Chinese food while I'm here in Germany? And you know, I don't mean to throw shade, but the Chinese restaurants here in Ingolstadt aren't so great. I had really only one option. I decided to take a trip to Berlin to consult the master of cooking authentic Chinese food in Germany. The one, the only, the legendary... Yay! Adjunct. Hello. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Berlin. Oh, thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. You guys probably recognize Andong from his insanely popular and amazing YouTube channel, My Name is Andong. Andong recreates these amazing, really authentic dishes from all around the world and, of course, China. The dishes you make from China always have my mouth like <laughs> drooling. <laughs> That's like... the stuff I miss the most. So when did you start cooking Chinese food? 
I started cooking Chinese food as soon as I came back from China. So when you're in China, you didn't cook it? Not really. I really miss Chinese food and yeah. I need to recreate it at home. And um, Berlin has a few good Chinese restaurants yeah. and stuff like that, but it's never as good as in China. So no, I'm trying to is. get there. So what is your experience cooking Chinese food authentic Chinese food in Germany because for me I go to the supermarket and it's like you can buy some hoisin sauce, some oyster <laughs> sauce, some soy sauce but I want to make like an authentic mapu tofu or yeah. some gongba ji ding like wh mm -hmm. what's your experience? So let's start with the good news meat and eggs are pretty easily available yeah and the holy trinity of Chinese cooking which would oh, be can I guess? yes? Uh, uh, onion, garlic, yes. ginger yes. You'll find like all the cabbages, all the potatoes, all the peppers and stuff, yeah. um, eggplants. All of these things you can easily find in Europe. For example, like let's say like the potato, like maybe the most German ingredient <laughs> there is. Because those are very widely available, you can like see like what cool potato dishes are there in China. You can find anything yeah. for Todosu in a German supermarket. Ah, fabulous. In terms of sauces, is there some like substitutions mm. I can do? I think in terms of like the condiments and sauces, it can be a hit or miss. I think if you don't have like a like a Chinese brand, Chinese yeah. vinegar that looks cool and that you want to use, I'd suggest just skip that one and try balsamic vinegar. Okay, balsamic vinegar, yeah. I can find that. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've made some really good kung pao chicken, oh. kung pao ji ding with, with balsamic vinegar before, cool. so that's worked. Cool. And also, I think kung pao ji ding also calls for a little, little bit of liao jiu. Yeah. AKA okay, xiao xing wan. Can I just and, use normal wine? And I would. Try to find sherry. sherry try to find wine. sherry. Like hey. so, you can try, and then let me know what you think of like balsamic <laughs> vinegar gumbaji ding. So jiaozi should be easy because literally the only difficult to source ingredient would be soy sauce, and that's okay. not so difficult to source. Even okay, here. this is really good news for me. Because like flour, well, we have seasonal difficulties right now. Yeah. Normally, <laughs> flour is very easy to source. Thank you so much for your tips. You're it's very so welcome. awesome to see you, and um, I'll keep you updated on my on my cooking progress. Please do. So I've decided to make a little Chinese banquet for my boyfriend and I. It'll be a three course meal. First course will be tudo si. Second course will be gong ba ji ding or kung pao chicken. Third course will be of course jiao zi, dumplings. Um, but there's an extra challenge to this cooking challenge that I hadn't really thought about until right now. So today is the 16th of March and as of today Germany's borders closed and a lot of the neighboring countries have gone into lockdown. So as I've entered the supermarket I'm seeing a lot of people with very full trolleys, um, a lot of very bare shelves, so will I be able to find all the ingredients I want? I don't know, we shall see. So for the first dish, tudo si, it's roughly translated to shredded potatoes. So of course I'm gonna need some potatoes and you know what? May as well get a big bag of them. Not the worst ingredient to have in a lockdown situation. <laughs> the recipe also calls for Chinese black vinegar, but there's definitely none of that in this supermarket here. So I'm gonna use Andog's advice and go for some balsamic vinegar. Definitely lots of that here. Dried chilies, which I'm super excited to find here in the veggie section. Also garlic and soy sauce. And then for the Kung Pao chicken, of course I'm going to need some chicken, some peanuts, a leek, soy sauce, black vinegar, which I'll be replacing with of course balsamic vinegar, Shaoxing cooking wine, which I'll be replacing with sherry, sugar, ginger and garlic. One of my most intense cravings these months has been for dumplings, more specifically Dongbei style boiled dumplings. So that is course number three. I thought long and hard about what I wanted to stuff these dumplings with. My original thought was pork and chive because that's my favorite ever dumpling combo. Uh, but I'm finding it really hard to find chives anywhere. So I've had a little last minute change of mind. So I've decided to stuff it with pork and Chinese cabbage. I have some ground pork here and Chinese cabbage I actually have at home in my fridge, so that works really well. As well as that, I'm also gonna need some scallions, some soy sauce, sesame oil, cooking wine, which I'm replacing with sherry, and some ginger. And then when it comes to the dumpling dough, all I need for that is all-purpose flour and some water. Sounds simple, right? Turns out not so simple. I'm here in the flour section to get flour for my dumpling dough. As Andong said, there are definitely some seasonal difficulties here when it comes to sourcing flour. Luckily, I have some all-purpose flour at home because there is none here. Okay, challenge number one completed. Shopping for ingredients during coronavirus crisis. I think I've done pretty well. Now, I know this is an experiment where I'm using all German supermarket foods to recreate authentic Chinese food, but I just had to cheat a little bit. I'm here on a weekend trip to Strasbourg and I've come across an Asian supermarket and look what I found. Some Sichuan peppercorns. Go 
Good morning. I've woken up nice and bright and early. It is 7 a.m. Um, and I've decided to get up super early to get started on the dumplings because I want this to be a bit of a lunch banquet and the dumpling dough needs three to four hours to rest. So it is 7 a.m. and I am about to get to work on my dumpling dough. So I'm going to need some all-purpose flour. Here in Germany, all-purpose flour goes by the name Type 550. I find the flour situation in Germany to be very confusing. It's got, it goes by numbers and for different very specific baked goods. But anyway, if you're looking for all-purpose flour, Type 550 is the way to go. Um, and then the only other ingredient I need for the dough is some water. So I am halving a dough recipe that I found online. Uh, so I'm going to be putting in two cups of all-purpose flour and then I'm going to add uh, half a cup of water slowly to the mix. I hope I've got the measurements right. The dough is looking still really clunky um, and this kneading process is real hard work. My head is just more and more full of doubt and I'm making the decision right now that this video is not going to be any kind of tutorial whatsoever because I obviously have no freaking idea what I'm doing so don't follow these instructions but this will just be a little experiment whether I can make decent tasting Chinese food in Germany so there will be no recipes shared. And after doing my best with the dough I had to put it aside and let it rest for three to four hours before I could start doing anything with it. Oh crap. Double crap. Triple crap. Yeah, it's been a very emotional few hours uh, here. I, we just got the news from the Australian government telling all Australians currently traveling abroad to come home as soon as possible because if you, basically they're saying if you don't come home now, we don't know if you'll be able to come home at all. Um, so after a lot of thinking, um, yeah, just went online and uh, bought a ticket to Australia for tomorrow, which is just seems, I'm in a bit of shock. I can't believe that I'm going to be leaving here tomorrow. Um, I'm so upset, but I, yeah, I, I guess it's the best decision. And I think it's the only thing I can really do right now. Probably the main reason that's making me want to go home is for visa reasons. Um, Australians can't spend an unlimited amount of time in Europe and I don't have a European passport. So um, I have a month and a half before my visa time here in Europe expires. And I'm not sure what kind of concessions would be made if I overstay my visa time and whether that would affect me coming back to Europe in the future. So yeah, I think it's probably for the best to go back to Australia and at least I'm home and with family, but I might not see you for like six months, you know? I don't know. That's, that's so that's shit. <laughs> well, at least we're in the modern age and we have FaceTime and we're not writing letters to each other. Yeah, we have, we have phones, which is good. That's, that's all we got left. I think the longest time we've ever spent apart, our longest break was three, three months? Yeah, three months. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, another thing I've just realized is that when I go home to Australia, I have to do a compulsory 14 day self isolation quarantine period, which is gonna be super awkward because I'm gonna be at home with my family. So basically just spend two weeks in my room. <laughs> But they say there's no better way to air emotional frustrations than by peeling potatoes. At the end of the day, I decided to go ahead with the Chinese banquet and make it instead more of a farewell banquet for us. So I saw in a bit of a dumpling hack online when you're making them with cabbage, you have to get the, the moisture out of the cabbage, otherwise you're gonna have weird filled dumplings. So um, one of the tricks for getting the moisture out is you add some salt and then just uh, leave it for 10 minutes or so to fully absorb all the salt. And then apparently it's just gonna wring out all of the moisture out of the cabbage, which sounds interesting. Mm. 
So this is the cabbage I'm left with. I cannot believe how much water, even now, is still coming out of this cabbage. Then it was time to mix the filling. It was pork mince, soy sauce, sherry, sesame oil, as well as garlic, ginger, and chopped scallions. Oh, and of course the cabbage. I got in there nice and deep black with my hands, which were washed by the way, to mix it all up. Then it was time to assemble these babies. I rolled out one third of the dough into a weirdly phallic shape and chopped it into 12 pieces. It was about that time that I realized we had no rolling pin, so I turned on resourceful Amy mode and in a stroke of absolute genius, used a cup. It worked very well, got the job done, no complaints here. I got some meat in there, I dampened the edges with water and sealed it up. Yay, I am super happy with my dumplings here. No, they are, do not look restaurant quality, but I'm just happy that the dough seems to be working for now. It hasn't ripped or broken during the dumpling putting together process. And yes, I have pockets of meat wrapped in dough. Let's get to work on the other dishes now. Put in some balsamic vinegar. Authentic. Check out my toodles. Well, the dumplings don't seem to be falling apart, which I'm very, very happy about. And I've never in my life spent so much time in the kitchen, so I really hope it tastes good. And of course, the dumplings need a dipping sauce. Um, I like my dipping sauce to be half soy sauce, half vinegar. So we're going in for the balsamic vinegar again. Um, let's see how this tastes in a dipping sauce. The dumplings are slowly starting to rise to the top, which I have been told means that they are on their way to being done. And I'm just waiting for them to get kind of a translucency in the skin and that's when I'm gonna take them out. Yeah, almost, almost done, almost done. Ooh. Final dish is done. Look at this wonderful table here. <coughs> what do you think? It looks very good. Very are, nice. Are you satisfied with the smell? Uh, I wanna start, let me start. No, no, not yet. Ah. We have to show Andong. Oh, hello, Andong. How are you? Yeah, hey, how are you doing? Very well. Um, I have just finished making my Chinese meal from German uh, supermarket ingredients. Um, and I think it's turned out quite well. You want to see? Please show me. I'm very excited to see them. Okay, so I've got a Kung Pao chicken here. Um, I've got dumplings here filled with uh, pork and cabbage and uh, to su, which I think is gonna be the most authentic of the meals that I made. I mean, they look fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how they taste, yeah. but they look really, really good. I think you did a great job. What, how, how, I mean, you had a double challenge, right? Yes, exactly. This, this time around. It wasn't just finding ingredients for a Chinese meal in a German su supermarket, but it was also just finding ingredients in general in a, China, in a German supermarket. It was crazy. But now I want to know how your food tastes like. Oh, wait, I'll try it. I actually haven't tried it yet. So let me give it a taste now. Uh, Delk, yes. I also invite you to have some, see what you think. I've been waiting so, for that. <laughs> Delk has been patently sitting here waiting for me to give him the red light, for the green light to go. Let's try. Oh, the compact chicken is quite good. I wouldn't say it's super authentic, but I managed to find some Sichuan peppercorns in a Chinese supermarket. I was a bit naughty. Makes that's, a difference. It's a little bit of a cheat, but that's good. Yeah. No, it's good. Um, and turo su. The turo su tastes really authentic, actually. That hits the spot, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'm super happy with that. Of course, I need to try a dumpling. Let's go. vinegar? I, <laughs> I'm using balsamic vinegar for the dip. <laughs> oh, okay. That sounds exciting. So <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Look. It's a bit different, right? It's okay. Dip-wise, it's fine. The dumpling itself, it tastes good, but it tastes less like a Chinese dumpling and more like a, a Polish pierogi, you know, if you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Maybe the way I've seasoned the meat, but it it's edible and it's quite tasty. Yeah. Whether this is a, an authentic Chinese meal, 
I don't think I can say it is, but it's tasty and it's Chinese-ish. <laughs> I think considering the circumstances we're under right now, you did a fantastic job. I think your experiment is a resounding success. Yay, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for your tips. It looks really delicious. <laughs> Yeah. Well, next time we get to cook something together. 100%. I still need a lot of tips. I am definitely at baby beginner stage right now. <laughs> All right. Awesome. We'll keep yourself safe. I will. I will. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Ciao. I like it. Yeah. I'm super happy with this meal. Overall, it's edible. Not only edible, but actually quite tasty. Um, whether it's super authentic, no, but it just shows that I have some practice I need to do. So let me know <laughs> if you'd be interested in seeing some more videos where I try and probably fail making some authentic Chinese dishes, let me know. But yeah, otherwise next video is probably gonna be me in Australia. Um, so yeah, hope you're all staying safe and healthy and happy and uh, from both of us, uh, uh, auf Wiedersehen, until next time. I liked it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>